Hi, hey, hello. Let's talk about resin. Resin limits you in pretty much all of your progress, including character accessions, uh, skill, talent upgrades, to artifacts, to pretty much everything. Whether you're gonna pay for resin or rely on the natural generation, this guide is applicable to you. Your max resin cap, uh, 120 resin, is the maximum amount of resin that you can store at any given time. Resin recovers at a rate of one resin per eight minutes, which is I honestly wish this was faster, twice as fast even, or maybe even half the costs of resin, but I digress. And this is why it's important to plan out your resin. Onto the main topic, how should you efficiently spend your resin? Resin is used for weeklies, character accessions, weapon ascensions, talent upgrade materials, artifacts, and farming more and EXP. So ley lines. All things held constant, I would prioritize them at the order I read them out. So that's weeklies, characters, weapons, talents, artifacts, and ley lines. Let me just quickly run through how each of them are important and we'll start talking efficiencies afterwards. All resin spending equates to the same gains in terms of adventure rank EXP. So that's 20 resin for 100 adventure rank EXP. And so just for you veterans who probably know most about resin, you can probably skip to the next part of the video where I talk about efficiencies because I'm just going to run through the intricacies of each of these resin spending activities. Number one, weeklies. These are just so value for resin in that, I mean, they just give you a whole bunch of different stuff such as character extension materials, four star weapon crafting materials, five star artifacts, etc. As of this patch, we have Storming Terror, aka Storm Terror, and Lupus Boreas, which is wolf. You can do one per week, cost 60 resin to do. I personally think it should cost nothing, but Again, I digress. And you should always do your weeklies because they're just so good for progression, like generally, but you should always wait until as late as possible in the week to do it because you want to be able to clear them at the highest world level as possible since it will let you get better drops and better items. For example, if you're AR23 and you reckon you can hit AR25 before the weekly reset happens, push AR25 and then do the weekly boss. If you're having trouble, you could actually get a friend to come help you do the wolf boss. I've tried to do Storm Terror with uh, one of my friends, it just doesn't work, I'm not sure why. I think it's a solo dungeon. Cool tip, there are a bunch of achievements that are tied to doing bosses in co-op together. Character extensions. These extensions allow you to break the maximum level cap on your characters so that they can get an increase in level cap. Each time you ascend, you get additional stats and you also have the ability to keep leveling. Remember that base stats, including base attack, these are multiplied by your multipliers from your gear. What this means is that, for example, the attack from a feather, this attack does not get multiplied by percentage attack. But the base attack from your character and their weapons, these figures are actually multiplied by the percent attack. In terms of character extensions, what matters most is extension 1 and extension 4. So for example here you see Fischl. I'm about to ascend her to A4 and she is going to get a new talent, Lightning Smite. So you can see that by the little star that's shining. Usually the ascension 4 passive talent is pretty busted. So for example, Ventis allows him to spam his ult a lot more as well as regenerate energy for everyone else. Xiangling gets a 10% attack buff every time Guaba finishes his fire attack. The look gets pyro damage and gets even more big dig damage, like etc. On top of this, every character has a substat. So for example, Traveler has the attack substat, Fischl also has the attack substat, Diluc has the crit rate substat. So as you can see, if I was to ascend her, her attack at this ascension doesn't go up, it's still going to be 61.6, .6, but at other ascensions you'll actually notice that she goes from 6% to 12%, for example, if you didn't have anything equipped. Again, every character is different, Venti has energy recharge, Xiangling has elemental mastery, and leveling your characters and hitting these milestones will get you increases in these, in these substats. Just give me a sec guys, Alan needs saving. You're welcome, my man. Cool tip. The only one I would think twice about ascending is probably Traveler. She just doesn't have that many good Good talents and skills. She kind of gets outscaled by everyone else, including the other four stars. And if you just have a look through her talents, it's just really lackluster and not a fan of it. Like it's okay to ascend her, she'll just use up some of the mats that you could be using for other characters, but these mats are actually farmable. <coughs> 
The main thing I'm concerned about is actually the fact that when you ascend them, you see that their level cap's raised, and so you're tempted to drop EXP books into them. It's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it for Traveler as much as I love her. Weapon Ascensions. Pretty straightforward. You can raise the weapon's level cap. Uh, in doing so, you actually raise their substats as well. So Compound Bow has physical damage substat. The important thing to see here is that the weapons give you base attack, right? So remember, base attack gets multiplied by percent attack. I'm never gonna stop stressing that because it's just so much more important than feather attack. On paper, feather attack is really good, um, especially for early game, but it gets outscaled by percent attack later on. Cool tip. So the domains with these circles are actually the ones that you can farm, and the domains with these diamonds are actually the ones where you do the one-time trials for like keys or for quests. However, you can also toggle this domains only, and it will actually show you the domains that are farmable as long as the as well as the associated materials or equips that you're going to get from them. Talent upgrades. So past phase two, you can actually upgrade your active talents so that's your skills, including your normal attack. It's just a straight numbers buff, nothing complex about it. But in the long run, it is quite worth it. So they use books and some monster materials. Artifacts. So this is the secret sauce. We want to be getting good artifacts, you know? However, a lot of the best artifacts are actually locked behind uh, higher ARs. So you can see here, Viridescent, Venero is the best in slot for all animo because of the four piece set effect decreases opponents elemental resistance to the element infused in the swirl by 40% for 10 seconds for the most part this is your best in slot for animo so as you can see this actually only unlocks at level 40 which is such a shame and why artifacts, in my opinion, are very low on the priority list for farming. If you can grind it because you're level 40 or 45 or above, go for it and go hit those perfect stats because that's probably where we're gonna be spending a lot of time end game. But until then, the artifacts that you have probably just juice them out. And here's the cool tip. So just remember to upgrade the artifacts that you're using now because later on you can just fuse them into your best in slots at just a 10% EXP loss. Remember that you need to be able to actually farm the artifacts before you can get them so that you can upgrade them. Leyline Blossoms. <sighs> Character EXP and Mora. Everyone knows about it. Only grind as needed. So if you're poor, you have 100k Mora and your next upgrade costs 80k, you don't farm Mora. Okay, because you can make it. Only if you actually need it do you grind it. So you, if your next upgrade is 80k and you have 30k, then go ahead and grind it. Character EXP, just remember to drop all of that juice into your main DPSs. Don't dump too much EXP into your supports, I made the mistake and now I'm kind of struggling. By AR40, when my characters go to the next ascension, I am going to be so starved. Alright, efficiencies, that's what we're here for, right? Let's apply what we just learned into some practical advice. Number one, only grind for things that you actually need at the time. Pre-grinding for materials will only hinder your uh, current capability in clearing content. Don't dump 240 resin into your character's next ascension when you can't even access it. You could use that to upgrade their talents or upgrading their weapon ascensions. And then after all that you complain that Abyss is still too hard. Number two, your resin may be better spent elsewhere, even on lower priorities. So let me take an example. My Diluc, he's level 69. Nice. His next character extension would actually take at least six boss runs to get those 12 seeds. I already have two, let's let's forget I had two. This would actually equate to 240 resin. However, if I used this 240 resin to boost my, let's say, my level two talents instead, 240 resin actually equates to 12 talent book runs. With 12 talent book runs, I could probably actually get both of these skills to level four. And that gives me a better DPS increase than farming for something that I don't actually need right now. Number three, take note of unlock levels for domains. Yesterday I was AR35, today I'm AR36. What I actually realized was that the next tier of book domains, so the domain of Mastery Realm of Slumber 3, this actually unlocked at AR36, which is weird number. So the one before that is actually AR28. And why this is important is because the AR36 variant, it's going to give you better drops, right? So why don't you just wait a little bit longer to get a little bit more out of your resin. It's like you're looking at a catalog for cat food and there is actually a sale for cat food, but the sale starts in like two days time. You would hold out for the cat food, right? Unless your cat was starving but your characters aren't starving. So just to sum it up, some of the domains have very odd uh, unlock requirements. Just remember to check them. If you're almost there, just hold out for them. Weeklies go up in fives, so not really too much funkiness there, but domains, they go up in eights and then sevens for the last one. So 30, 36 to 45 is nine. 
weird. Number four, prioritize between your normal attack and your E and Q skills. For example, with Venti, I usually just switch in, use either E or Q, and then probably switch out. So that means that I never actually really use the normal attack. What this means is that you should not juice out his normal attack. You should actually be putting the books towards his E and his Q. Maybe extreme late game where you've maxed all of their E's and Q's out or whatever, you can start putting into normal attack. But yeah, Venti, you don't really use his normal attack. So you don't touch that shit. Cool tip. So you can actually use alt plus their number to instantly switch and cast their ultimate. So if I did alt three, it switches to Venti and I instantly cast the alt. Never let your resin cap. Everyone knows this one. I don't need to talk about it. Resin is limited use it up. And especially with the slow recharge, this should never be an issue. Number six, weapon ascension materials may be scarce, but hitting ascension one or two, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you can probably hit it within one run of a dungeon. Obviously you want to juice out your DPS first, but if you just need that little bit of extra heal to get you past that abyss stage, hitting a dungeon once uh, in mid late game will probably actually get you ascensions one and two on a weapon. So that's going from weapon level 20 up to 50. Might give you know that Barbara that extra bit of heal might give that Jean that extra bit of heal or that energy recharge that she needs etc. Number seven fuse your lower tier materials into your higher tier materials as your main team or your adventure rank gets higher and higher you're just going to come across more and more mats so investing into your main team now is just going to help your subsequent characters get stronger. You'll usually be starved of the higher tier mats anyway and you want to be juicing out your main team all the time. Number 8. Early mid game, buy out all of the items in the souvenir shop. You have enough sigils to buy everything out and more, so, so it actually might let you do something else with the resin that you're going to use. Number 9. Mid late game, focus all of your resources into your carries. You're going to feel very very starved for exp books and weapon exp materials. Trust me. Number 10. Don't grind out Mora ley lines until you really need it because there are just so many other sources of Mora. So I know I said this before, I'm explicitly calling it out again. More often than not, Mora is not your limiting resource. It's going to be those books or those masks uh, that you steal off the healer trails. You can also farm Animo and Geo sigils from the floating boxes in the sea and they actually give you more, uh, quite a fair bit. Um, it, it all adds up, man. If you're really cornered and it's limiting you, uh, go ahead, 100%, but until then, and number 11, complete your ley lines, but don't loot them. So this is just to finish your battle pass weekly if you have that quest. You can do four a day without looting them and they just persist in the world. Just save that resin boy, you'll need it. So that brings me to the end of the video. I thought that this would be a short one, but I have a feeling it's gonna end up 20 minutes long again. I am so sorry to future me. And you. So again, as usual, I hope you've learned something, something to help you make your decisions with your resin. If you know anything else that's cool that I hadn't considered, drop it down in the comments. But otherwise, you know what to do. Uh, blah 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 blah. I can't even remember it right now. But long story short, I will catch you in the next video. And thanks again for watching.